Hey cousins, welcome to Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. Welcome cousins to this conversation of Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. I'm your host Cornell Wright, the People's Lobbyist, and in this conversation we're going to talk about trusted information sources. Cousins, we all have heard about, if you will, the silo effect of people getting information. We know because of once you put in information into your computer or your phone or your inter you're interfacing with the internet in any way, the various mechanisms that are out there, the algorithms can start to further refine and move you toward a particular information stream based upon the information that you have looked up immediately or in the past. As a result, you just think about when you start looking at one search, perhaps for a gift for someone for Valentine's Day, and next thing you know, here are all these different information, pieces of information about that same subject, even though you may have already purchased it, right? So what that is doing though, cousins, that's starting to separate us from a marketing standpoint, they're looking at market segmentation and further identifying us for particular information in order to help us make a decision. But on the broader perspective, cousins, in regards to our country, our politics, our societal feelings about things, that same factor is occurring. That same siloing, if you will, is occurring to us. You follow me, cousins? That siloing, I contend, is not good for us in regards to our communications, our exchange, and for us to be able to come up with the best ideas for all the cousins involved. So, to that end, I'd like to suggest four information sources that I've found to be trustworthy over the decades. I would ask you to also consider these as information sources you can start to go to for information and perhaps can start to be a common ground for our having conversations moving forward. These are not the only trusted information sources out there, cousins, but let me just give you these four now in order for a starting set, okay? So the first one, which I did a show on last season, is the NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric and Information. Those are the folks, a part of the federal government, who helps us with understanding our weather patterns. Now, when you watch the weather patterns from your local news or television station, they may have their lo own local capabilities, but when you start looking at more of the national picture, that's where the NOA comes from. That's where the source of that information. For sailors, they're concerned about that. For all the farmer cousins who are out there, they're concerned about that. The primary source of that information is the NOAA. I think it's worth our money. I think we're getting great service out of it. And if nothing else, cousin, it's a, for those cousins in the, in the Gulf and the Atlantic coast, they predict the hurricanes. For the cousins out in, uh, in Hawaii, they start to predict the tsunamis and, and not only that, and, and, the, and the weather events out there, it's worthwhile to keep in mind. And that's one we can all start to use and um, start to use and then come to understanding with. Now, it's not very often, cousins, we have discussions or, or debates about the weather, <laughs> right? But that is a good source to start with some trusted information, right? Let's just use that one. The next, cousins, is one we've heard a lot more about in 2020 and 2021, and that is the Centers for Disease Control. Now, I also mentioned them a little bit while ago when I talked about in the episode, talking about the syphilis experiment, about how an early version or one of the early agencies, if you will, which is now funneled into the Center for Disease Control, a lot of changes over time. But in essence, the Center for Disease Control is the best and our information source about all disease types. They're for the prevention of disease. They help us understand diseases. They do research on diseases. And cousins, where would we have been without the work from all those good hardworking cousins down to the CDC in the recent pandemic that we were fighting and still are fighting here in 2021? They're almost indispensable, cousins. And what they say is not necessary for debate. You talk to any of your medical professional association, people that you know, and ask them how much they rely on information from the CDC. Let me tell you a personal story. <laughs> Years ago, <clears throat> my wife and I, we were buying a new house. 
And so as part of looking at the new house, we had to get a radon inspection. Now, for those of you who don't know, radon is a little bit of a radioactive gas that's emitted naturally from rocks and from certain types of rock formations. Our house is built on a rock. Think about from that from a biblical standpoint, you know what I mean? But then we had to get a radon test. So at that time, I was working the corporate world. I had a, I had a, a secretary, you know, and so I come back from lunch and I have this message that's turned over and stapled. Usually the messages were just standing out there. Now, I'd recently been married, oh, maybe five, six months. And so prior to that, cousins, I was drinking sometimes, shall we say. And so I was wondering, what was it about this particular note? I go back to my office, and I open up the note, and it's from the CDC. They were calling about the radon test and providing me information about my house. In a moment, I said, oh, wow. I had to go talk to my secretary. She thought I was concerned about an AIDS test, and she was trying to make sure I was OK. She was concerned about me. I told her, I'm fine. Thank you very much for your concern. It's just another job the CDC was doing for us, OK? They're great. The other is Cousins, the Smithsonian Institute. Now, the Smithsonian Institute, I've had a long history with them from when I lived in Washington, D.C. as a kid and had a chance to go to the museums. If for no other reason at the time, I didn't have air conditioning in my house and the Smithsonian Institute museums were air conditioned, right? They're fantastic. The Smithsonian Institute is part of our federal, federal government and it is the largest collection of museums in the world, all right? They have 22 museums, gallery centers, and the National Zoo. Unfortunately, because of COVID, all those great facilities are closed. Their collection is extensive across a lot of different areas, cousins. And trust me, as you spend time thinking about, which I certainly appreciate, all little cousins getting a chance to go to Disney World, and I want to go again too as soon as I can, also consider taking your family to the Smithsonian Institute. You'll still need more than a week to see the museums, and even then you won't be a chance to see everything. It is fantastic. It's a learning experience. It's an experiential experience. You see things that you only hear about. It brings in history. It brings in the perspective about our country from multiple perspectives and angles. And since it's museums, and it's based upon the archaeological, anthropological, and societal and historical facts, it can be a reliable source of information. They have, the net, they have the channel on TV, they have magazines. In fact, they can even take your subscription cousins, which we all should do, in order to maintain that information coming into your house with their magazines. It's worthwhile. And it's a trusted information source. And the last one, and by the way, cousins, none of these recommendations I'm making to you, I'm receiving any benefits, just to be clear, okay? But the last one is a little bit different. And that is a 60 Minutes news program on CBS. 60 Minutes came out and debuted on television in 1968, okay? It's one of the longest running programs on TV and it has been continuously rewarded for its journalism and excellence in that regard. They are so good cousins that when they do make a mistake, which is rare in one of their interviews or one of their features they give you information on, the next week they'll come back and tell you what that information, what that mistake was and make apologies as appropriate. Who else does that? Okay? So cousins, just as a quick review, the NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, the Centers for Disease Control, or the CDC, the Smithsonian Institute, and CBS 60 Minutes. Those are trusted information sources, cousin. Trust me, I've been associated with these for decades, <laughs> longer than some of you cousins are old, and I have not been disappointed or been had to change the perspective about any information they've provided and if they do they make the corrections for you so you know where they made a mistake and guess what they don't make the same mistake twice so cousins if we need to come together there has to be some basis of information we can start to all look at and, and understand as being correct you remember when you used to play hide and seek everybody had to put their hand on the tree these are information trees cousin let's go use that so we can start to understand what we need to do to start having some information we can all trust and believe in so we can come up with a better us. 
Okay, cousins, thank you for joining me on this conversation of brown liquor and bad ideas. Remember, keep wearing your mask. When the vaccine comes along in your way, get it. Please subscribe and leave comments uh, in the, below. And thank you for joining me in this episode of Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. Take care of yourself. We are the people.